pretty well annoyed by the amount of space that my sliding compound miter saw takes up. So originally, I wanted a radial arm saw, but they were way too expensive, brand new, and I've heard horror stories about the older ones. So, and, I thought, and everyone told me that they were far bigger than the, a miter saw would be. So I, uh, I, I got a sliding compound miter saw, pretty cheap. No major complaints about it, besides the fact that it takes up a crazy amount of space. So after a little bit of more research, I found a couple models, and thanks to some people on uh, Sawmill Creek, uh, I decided on trying to find a Delta turret arm. And completely by pure luck, I found an old ad on Craigslist. It's 21 days old, and it was for an estate sale, and just radial arm saw was listed. No other information besides that. And there are tons, tons of radial arm saws for sale on Craigslist, but they're all usually craftsmen or, or really crappy models. So I had a contact number. I called him, and he's like, I don't know anything about it. It, it, it was my father-in-law's. We just had to put him in a home. And this guy was a really nice guy. So I, I came out, saw it in the back of the garage, <laughs> and I was just trying to make sure my jaw didn't drop when I saw it. It was exactly what I wanted. Um, so I bought it for $125, and it came with I think, six saw blades and even a uh, adjustable data blade. I didn't have one of these, I'll have the finger joint set, so this will be nice as well. Uh, it works, everything operates. Um, the side to side is rather stiff right now, so I'll have to do some work on it. And I mean, everything operates fine, and it runs, but. Uh, said that the spinning is not good. It usually means the bearings are dry and need to be replaced. So I'm going to be spending some time on uh, oldgoodlookingmachines.org and trying some help on uh, how to get this thing working better. I really thought that was good. Maybe not.
So I think this might be a little bit older than the 30C, but I don't know for sure. So it turns out this is actually a lot smaller footprint than the sliding compound miter saw. This is only 33 inches deep from the wall to this arm, to the end of the arm, is 33 inches. And it can cut 14 inches. Well, my sliding compound miter saw, that comes out from the wall 44 inches. That's a lot. I have to keep it angled over at the 45 all the time. And even then, it's still 36 inches out from the wall. And the maximum depth of cut on the sliding cap on miter saw is 12 inches. So I get two extra inches depth of cut, and it comes out from the wall a whole lot less. And because I have all of the space out front in front of the saw, this can be shared work surface, where the sliding compound miter saw sits out from the, from the wall so far that I really can't share any of the space that it uses. So I'm planning on readjusting my, my setup in my shop again after I get this thing in good working condition. And I'm actually planning on putting this in an L-shaped configuration in front of my saw so that this will be part of an in-feed table on the right hand side of my table saw. So I'll have this, then my table saw, then my workbench. So I'll have all that space of work surface. So I think that should work out pretty well.